it's Milo back with another how-to video. They're following me. Flow with Milo, how-to video number... I don't know how many I've done of these. I'll just keep doing them. Hello, Milo here. I thought I'd do a how-to video of something that a lot of people have been mentioning on the forums. It's how to regrease your stern gland. Um, for this, you will need your stern grease, obviously, uh, a cloth, <clears throat> and the vital ingredient, a butter knife. Yes. And this is how we regrease a stern gland the easy way. The first thing you'll have to do is locate your stern gland tube and that isn't always easy. Uh, uh, but I'll show you what mine looks like and maybe that'll give you some idea. There it is. <clears throat> it's this little plunger, which is good. Oh, great. <clears throat> this screws up like this and then screws down like that. And as it screws down, it pushes the grease down this little tube into here. This is your drive shaft here. Out there is your propeller. Every time your drive shaft is engaged, it's going to break this seal. And in this little area that's packed here is like a Hessian rope and the uh, marine grease gets squirted into there. Um, so every single time your drive shaft is engaged, for whatever reason, even if it is, you know, just 13 seconds, you will have to turn this to push more grease down into that. You will especially have to turn this if you get water dripping through into your bilges. Let's give that a little bit of a clean so we can continue. Narrow boats are all about maintenance and cleaning. As you can see, I haven't really done much cleaning of this for a long time, but then the last time I packed it, it was nice and clean, so I didn't have to do much to it. This will just make sure that I don't get any grease all over myself as I'm doing it. Now, I don't unscrew this. At the moment, the grease plunger has pushed grease all the way down to that. If you unscrew this, you're going to end up pulling grease back up through this tube or possibly developing an air pocket, so you don't want that. You don't want to unscrew this either. You can see there's a little thread under there. And pack the grease in that way. I wouldn't do that either. I would unscrew this entire tube, which I'm gonna do now, and then I'll show you what happens. So the whole thing comes away, and as you can see, the grease is right down to the last of that plunger, okay? This is how we can clean this, and clean this without getting any gunk on our fingers. Let's give that a clean. And you'll probably want to clean the threads a little bit if you can without touching too much of the grease that's already there. And that's it. That's all you need to do with that. When it comes to the tube, just rotate until you've squeezed off. If I can get a little bit closer, maybe you can see that. And just rotate it until all those threads have been cleaned. Then once all that's clean, you know you're not gonna get any on your fingers. And this also gives you a chance to clean the entire thing as well, because it's all complete and it's not covered in gunk. It gives you a time to shine it up. You can also use Brasso, or I actually recommend an, another substance called Shiny Sinks, which you can buy from any Robert Dias, and then you put a little bit of Brasso on afterwards to shine it up. It also works really, really good with your mushroom vents. This is where your butter knife comes into play. Open up your grease, and you're gonna wanna have some nice marine grease. Looks a bit like that. Okay, I've got this stuff which is uh, Renolit EP2. I don't know if you can see that. I basically, when I bought the boat a few years ago, um, I asked them to repack the stern gland when the boat was out of the water. And um, I said, just leave me the grease 
that you don't use so that I can use it for my stern gland. So, this is how I repack my stern gland the easy way. You just unwind the tube and as you unwind it you'll start to see that a cavity starts to appear. Can you see that? A cavity starts to appear there. Once you've got a cavity of about half an inch you get a little bit of grease and you pop it in there. Try not to get too much on the threads or anywhere else on the brass. And you build up like a little dome so you have no air pockets whatsoever. So there we have a nice little dome. And then you start to wind again. See the dome? Start to wind down again. As you wind down again, you'll start to notice the grease starts to disappear. And you end up with another little cavity. And then you go again. Try to push down on the grease like that. So you don't end up with any air pockets until you have another little dome and you go again. Just keep turning that until the grease comes all the way down and you end up with another little cavity. And that's basically how you can repack your stern gland. Now, I'm going to keep going here. I mean, I know how long this thread is, or I have an idea of how long this thread is. Um, if you don't, you might end up with packing it like this, and then you keep turning it and turning it and turning it, and then you realise you come to the end of your thread and your plunge is back here. But my advice is just to keep going and keep going and keep going until it doesn't turn anymore. If you end up with a mound of grease, you don't really want that mound of grease there because when you screw this whole thing back down there, the grease is just going to squirt out and it'll be quite messy. So the best thing to do is just to use your butter knife just to make it flat. Maybe just a little bit more. Like that. Once you're done with the grease, make sure that that is all put away. Oh yeah, just a slight footnote, buying marine grease this size uh, will be quite expensive. I'm not sure whether you can buy it in different sizes, but make sure you get a good quality marine grease. And then if you're buying good quality materials and good quality stuff for your boat, it's gonna last. Now we're going to screw this back upside down into the cup. And um, it's always good to make sure that all the grease is off the tube and off the threads. So we're just going to wipe it with a bit of a cloth. Like that. And then we're ready to re-screw this back down. Just let the brass sit in the threads like that. And sometimes what I do is I screw it backwards until I hear it click. You don't want to cross thread this because then it's a nightmare to come out. So there it's just sat into the cup there. 
where it is and they're sitting in there right and now you can just screw it up there might be a little bit of grease splurging out of here sometimes that happens but you can just keep going you can always wipe that off with a cloth later there we go that's on firm now any excess grease around here we can just wipe off the threads and it's also good to wipe any excess grease off of these threads as well now you can give it a few turns to check and once that's stiff oh let's go back again that's it once that is stiff we're going back down then you know that it's turning the right way and then the only way to check whether it's actually all working properly is if you look down here you'll actually start to see the grease oozing out once you turn this you'll see the grease oozing out of there so there you have it regreasing a stern gland the easy way you don't need any gloves you just need a cloth and a butter knife. If you have any questions about this process or any questions about the packing that I explained um, where you have the Hessian rope around your drive shaft uh, then uh, drop me any uh, questions and uh, if I have to at a later date repack my entire drive shaft um, I will explain that too. I'll do a how-to on that. Um, if you are finding that as you are turning your uh, greaser tube and you're constantly getting drips through into your bilges, then you may have to have a look at maybe tightening the two screws which tighten that gap where the grease goes into, where the Hessian rope goes into. Um, that's one option. Um, if the screw threads are really long, like it's been tightened up as much as it can tighten, and you're constantly trying to inject grease into it and it's constantly dripping, then you probably will have to have the whole thing repacked. Have an engineer check it out uh, the next time the boat is out of the water when you're having it blacked. That's the ideal time to check anything with your prop. Another handy thing to do with your prop when your boat's out of the water is to get a file and file down the edges of your propeller that way it will um, cut its way through anything uh, rather than stuff getting wrapped around it anyway that's the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it leave any comments on twitter or on my facebook page or directly underneath this video if you like this video please subscribe if you haven't already and um, i will make more how-to videos as i go along that's all for me bye bye